I want to take some time to talk about where I live. Not this apartment, but the city surrounding it. That is, I want to talk about New York City. Paying for the rights to famous songs is expensive, so just imagine that Frank Sinatra's New York, New York, or Jay-Z's Empire State of Mind is playing in the background of this entire video. There's sometimes this classic, iconic, nostalgic feeling that New York can offer you. I like to think that I'm not very biased, given that I've only lived here for about five years, or nine years if you consider the four years I lived on Long Island while I was in college, uh, but New York City has something magical about it. Okay, I actually wanna retract that because it isn't magic. That takes away from the very real, very corporeal elements that make New York City what it is. Specifically, I wanna talk about photographing New York City, and this might apply to cities worldwide. What makes New York City such a great place to photograph? And how has it been documented in the past? To answer that first question, I wanna bring up something that applies to my approach to photographing this city. And that has to do with the labyrinthian nature of it. In terms of navigating the city, I've heard that New York is actually one of the simpler ones. It's a grand system, mother but sometimes I get blown away by the sheer number of streets and alleys and nooks and crannies that there are in this massive place. What I've been doing lately is picking a general area, maybe a place that I've never been before, and just sort of wandering. In French, there's this term, actually, it's flaneur, and it means an idler or a man about town or someone who walks about. This isn't a groundbreaking technique for taking photos by any means, but I'm telling you this to highlight the variety of subject matter that a city like New York can offer you. And it appears that those offerings are endless. I can ride an hour up to Harlem and photograph a red lighthouse under the George Washington Bridge, and then head back to Dumbo and photograph the Manhattan Bridge. But while waiting for the subway, I see a funny sign in the station and photograph that. And then I ride back up to Central Park and photograph a man playing the saxophone on a bench. But along the way, I look up and see these towering skyscrapers in Lower Manhattan, or the way the sunlight is gracing the apartments in the Arts District, or a set of balloons on the sidewalk, or the graffiti on the brick buildings. And maybe one day, I'll head all the way down to Coney Island and document the boardwalk, before photographing the birds at Prospect Park, or stray cats on the stoop of someone's brownstone. The compositions and subjects are genuinely endless, and I didn't even mention Queens or the Bronx or Staten Island, all of which are within a two-hour commute of this apartment. Or what about Roosevelt Island or Governor's Island or taking a ferry out to go see the Statue of Liberty? You might be out there thinking, yeah, so what? So it's a city. So it's got a lot of places. We knew that already. I mention all of this because for me personally, I have felt a sense of stagnation in my work. and. It took a bit of perspective for me to break out of it. I had to sort of zoom out at a certain point and see the potential of the access that I had to my surroundings. And when I realized that, it lit a fire under me to make it a point to discover something, some place that I had never been before. And that encouraged me to go out and shoot. When I think of my favorite photos that I've taken of New York City, the ones that stand out aren't the ones of skyscrapers or of iconic landmarks. I like those but it's the micro subjects. I know I just said zoom out, but it's that zooming back in that offers the true perspective. Those balloons on the sidewalk, or the neon sign in the window, or that graffiti spattered icebox, or pink flowers, or the dog poking its nose through a fence, or even just a staircase at magic hour. It's these moments of banality or mundanity that photographers have been obsessed with for over a century. The juxtaposition of bustling business, cars honking, bicycles zooming past you, subways rumbling the ground beneath your feet, and the quiet, calculated stillness of an image is what makes photographing New York City such a unique and rewarding experience. It really is a city of contrasts, where old and new, grand and mundane exist side by side, offering photographers a wealth of visual stories to be captured. To capture the essence of the unseen New York is to embark on a journey of exploration and revelation where each neighborhood, street corner, alleyway holds a potential for discovery. It's in these unassuming spaces that the true character of New York City reveals itself, away from the glare of the spotlight or the hustle of the crowds. Also, New York City has been a muse for photographers for 
over a century. One of the most significant movements of photography was the New York School of Photographers, which flourished in the early to mid 20th century. The New York School was characterized by its focus on capturing the everyday life of the city and its inhabitants, often in stark black and white. Real quick, I'm just gonna rattle off a list of names of photographers who are classified as being part of the New York School. We've got Diane Arbus, Richard Avedon, Alexei Brodovich, Ted Croner, Bruce Davidson, Don Donaghy, Louis Farrer, Robert Frank, Sid Grossman, William Klein, Saul Leiter, Leon Levenstein, Helen Levitt, Lizette Modell, David Vestal, and Ouija. These photographers and more were responsible for the way in which New York was portrayed on the national and international stage. What set the New York School apart was its emphasis on capturing the decisive moment, a term very famously coined by Henri Cartier-Bresson. This concept emphasized capturing a fleeting moment that revealed the essence of a scene, often resulting in images that were spontaneous and unposed. Bernice Abbott was known for her documentary work capturing the changing face of New York City in the 1930s. And Ouija, who captured the gritty reality of urban life in the 1940s and 50s, was one of many who were instrumental in shaping the aesthetic of the New York School. The New York School also had a strong influence on street photography, with photographers like Gary Winogrand and Joel Meyerowitz exploring the city's streets with a keen eye for the unexpected and the poetic. Their work captured the energy and diversity of New York City, showcasing its vibrant street life and the interactions between people and their environment. Now, it wouldn't feel right talking about photographing the most photographed city in the world without talking about the artistic desire for that ominous O word, originality, and the difficulty that one can face when trying to reconcile those two things. What I mean is, you walk around and you take photos and there's a piece of you that wants to own it, that wants to believe that you're seeing something that no one else sees. And chances are, that isn't the case. Just about every square inch of New York City has been documented, whether on celluloid or digitally. So what are some strategies to navigate this sort of imbalance? One that I already mentioned was to seek out unexplored areas. While iconic landmarks like the Empire State Building and Central Park are popular subjects, there are countless lesser known corners of the city waiting to be discovered. Explore new neighborhoods, parks, and streets to find less photographed scenes that still capture the essence of the city as you see it. And even if something has been photographed a million times, you can often put your own stamp on it by experimenting with a technique such as long exposure, black and white photography, try using colored filters or shooting infrared, or test out some abstract compositions to create unique and original images of familiar scenes. Also, not every photograph has to be perfect. Embrace imperfections such as lens flares and motion blurs to create images that are more personal and expressive. And also something that I say all the time is just study the work of others. While it's important to develop your own style, Studying the work of other photographers can provide inspiration and new ideas. Look for photographers who have captured New York City in a way that resonates with you and analyze their techniques and their approach. And lastly, I would say to not focus on originality so much. At least don't let it be a deterrent for you. Like it should never stop you from taking the photograph. I hope I'm not alone in this. I like to think I'm not, but we can all get in our heads about this stuff. Like spend 30 seconds at that spot in Dumbo where you could see the Manhattan Bridge between those buildings and you'll see dozens of photographers come in and take the same picture at slightly different angles. Spend an hour there on the weekends and you'll see hundreds. It used to ruffle my feathers. I would see this sea of zoom lenses and Leicas and monopods and I would flip my collar up and I would walk off as if I was better than them for ignoring the obvious composition. And I see now that I was being young and naive and arrogant and f***ing annoying. And I've gone back and I've taken that photo multiple times because frankly, who cares? Ultimately, the most important thing is to keep taking photographs and keep honing your craft. Every photograph you take even if it's of a scene that's been photographed a million times, is an opportunity to grow as a photographer and to deepen your connection with your subject, your audience, and with the medium at large. So don't let the pursuit of originality hold you back. Embrace the familiar, but always strive to see it in a new light. 
All right, some final thoughts. I still hesitate to call myself a New Yorker. In such a hodgepodge of cultures and environments and subjects, what does being a New Yorker even mean or matter at this point in history? Like, I can't say it's the same as that scene in the original Spider-Man where you know, all those New Yorkers are on the bridge and they're like, this is New York. You mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. It, like it isn't, I, I don't see that. The one thing that I know is that I love photographing this city. You can't help but feel a certain kinship with the photographers who came before you and influence much of the way that we see this place. And if I could end this off with a message to everyone, whether you're in New York City or any other city in the world, I would say that as you navigate the labyrinthian streets of your city, your town, your village, whatever. Remember that your photographs are not just about capturing a moment in time, but about telling a story and sharing a unique vision with the world. Whether you're photographing the grandeur of the skyline or the quiet moments of everyday life, each photograph can be a testament to your love of your home and your desire to capture its beauty and its complexity. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I had known for a while that I'd wanted to make a video about photographing New York City um, and just sort of like a, a little love letter to the city a little bit um, for a while now, but it, it took me a while to get to this point. So thank you all for sticking around and watching it. If you watch my channel this long, you probably know what I'm about to say, but go ahead, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified when new videos are released. You can go ahead and find my print shop where you can buy a print and help support this channel that way. You could also become a member by finding that join button for a few bucks a month. You can help support this channel into the future. I also haven't mentioned this in a while, but hit me up on Instagram. Feel free to DM me any questions, comments, um, and also be on the lookout because I'm always posting about updates to this channel. And with that, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna leave with a bunch of photos that I've taken of New York City, um, some of which I've already you've already seen. But um, yeah, I'm just gonna play a bunch of photos that I've taken of New York City and I'll see you all next time.